Hey everyone, it's Brandon here. Uh, today what we are going to be doing is racking wine to get it into secondary fermentation. Stay tuned, I'm going to show you how easy it is. Today I'm going to show you how to rack off your one gallon batch of wine. Uh, I do a lot of one gallon batches, to me it's just easier, uh, but you can do as much as five gallons or even more depending on your vessel size. Uh, for this you're just going to need some very simple items. You're going to need something to put your container on that is holding your wine. I'm going to use this bucket that I picked up from my local grocery store out of the bakery section. I use these for fermentation as well. Uh, it's a two gallon bucket and it's going to raise up the height of my wine. And then you're going to need a secondary vessel to capture the filtered wine. And lastly, you're going to need the wine itself. And when you make the transfer up to the higher elevation, try not to disturb the lease on the bottom because all that will get sucked up. So first thing we're going to do is remove our stopper and put that into our sanitizer water. And let me tell you, mm, that smells really, really good. What I'm going to do is just take it off of the lease put it into a new vessel. I'm going to put the airlock back on and let it continue to sit for at least two more weeks, maybe longer. Uh, the, the big thing that I, I hear a lot of is people think that it's overly complicated to make wine. It's really not. It's extremely easy. Now, this wine, uh, let's see, started on February 15th, today is March the 10th. So it's been over three weeks. So I'm confident this is done. Uh, one of the thi another thing you're going to need for sure is one of these devices here, which is an auto siphon. You put this down into the bottle and by pumping it up and down, whoop, there's a little water coming out, but that's okay, because this is sanitizer water. It's not going to do anything to your brew at all. But you start at the bottom. You take the device and put it in. I go about halfway. And then you pump it a, a couple of times to get it going. And just like that. And then as it gets closer down to the bottom, then what I will do is I will move the auto siphon down, uh, making sure not to disturb the lease at the bottom. And then once this is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my area. I also have a, another racking of another wine that I did. I'm not going to bore you with it, but it's the same exact process regardless of the type of wine that you're doing. Um, also, a lot of people get concerned about air getting into your wine and stuff like that. If you noticed, I took the tube and I made sure it was down at the bottom to where it circulates. Now, this has not been degassed yet. So, with that being said, there's still a lot of CO2 in this, in this wine. So, I'm not really worried about problems with oxygen. And this is my theory on this, and it's worked for me for many years, is that CO2 is lighter than air. When the wine is going over into your secondary, 
that CO2 is going to be slightly released. And when that happens, the CO2 is going to force the oxygen out of the container. And when that happens, there's no way for the air to come in and you know cause any problems like, oh, well, you, you know, you can cause vinegar to occur and stuff. That is a totally different process than what we are doing. As long as you uh, sanitize your vessels, sanitize everything, you're going to be fine. Now, once I get everything transferred over, now see at this step here, it's getting kind of low. So what I'm going to do is very gently, I'm going to tilt it to the side because I want to get as much of this out of here as possible without disturbing the leaks. Um, now, that being said, uh, like I said, this has not been degassed. This is still going. Okay, it got a little air in it, but that's okay because gently pumping that just a little bit is taking care of the rest of it. Now, once I get this out, I, I want to know how well my fermentation went. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a sample and take a reading and compare it to my starting gravity and see what my final gravity is. And through calculation, it'll tell me round about what my ABV is for this particular wine. Now this wine I used store-bought juice uh, from the local big box store. I went to Walmart and it was only a couple of dollars for the juice. And I had the yeast available already because I made a purchase on Amazon for some yeast and that's what I used. I used the D47. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take my cylinder and my hydrometer that has been sterilized. I'm going to get rid of this sanitizer water. I'm going to get my hydrometer. All of this has been sanitized already. I'm going to take my masking tape label off of my jug that I did my initial fermentation in and I'm going to put it on the new one that I'm going to be doing secondary. Now a lot of people say secondary fermentation. I don't agree with that term uh, because at this point in time with this wine I'm sure this is done. It's been you know over three weeks. There hasn't been hardly any activity in the airlock and I think the little bit of activity that was there is just naturally degassing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sample everything is like I said been sanitized and put it in my cylinder My baster's not working as well as it once did. It may be time to replace it, and that's okay. Okay, put that back in and go kind of low. That way, I'm not introducing oxygen into it. And put put my baster back in my sanitizer water and take the hydrometer and hopefully it doesn't go all out. Okay, looks pretty good. A little close to the top, but that's okay. Give it a little spin to kind of shake the bubbles off a little bit. This looks like it went down to 0 0.1, I'm going to say 1.000, which to me, 
that's screaming it's dry. So, which tells me that it had maximum efficiency on the yeast that I used. So what I'm going to do is use my handy dandy uh, calculator to determine the, uh, the alcohol level of my brew. So I started off with the original gravity of 1.070 and final gravity is 1.000. That has given me a 9.25% ABV which is not bad because this is considered a table wine so I'm okay with that now sometimes depending on the juice and, and the conditions and everything you can get much much higher now what I'm going to do is this with this right here I'm going to pour off a little sample just for clarification and now this a lot of people will tell you to throw it away I'm not one of those people this has been sanitized this has been sanitized this wine has not been degassed yet so as I neither has this when I pour this into here the carbon dioxide is going to push the oxygen out however I am going to very carefully do it cause as little disturbance and try not to make as much of a mess as possible. Just like that. Now. So what I am going to do now is on this, since I am pretty much done at this point, um, with uh, with the bottling, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and make sure I have my fluid levels correct in my airlock, which I have a little bit more than I need. There, and I'm going to go ahead and put the airlock back in the bottom and I will be right back with that here in just a minute okay now just for future reference not all bottles are the same this right here happens to be a cheap wine bottle from the local big box store that we drank and I saved the bottle as you can see it's works perfectly fine just make sure you get the right stopper or bung size whatever you want to call it now as I said I'm going to leave this here for at least two more weeks and that that is to condition the wine it's going to allow it to naturally off gas and it's anything that may be left in it is going to settle down to the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and I am going to clean out my jug here and sanitize it and I'm going to be using this on my other one because I am down to three of these glass jugs so it's okay to go ahead and clean this really well scrub it out really well and sanitize it and it'll work just fine I'll be right back with it and we'll go ahead and rack this other wine that I have be right back okay and we're back I uh, had a little mishap cleanup but no big deal so now the wine that I have in here this is also from the store this is a white grape and peach also purchased at Walmart and I can tell you this by looking at it it is still degassing. How do I know this? Since I moved it up, I see a lot of bubbles rising to the surface, which is good. 
because this is going to prevent any oxygen from getting down in there and causing a bunch of nastiness that we don't want. So, just like we did on the red wine, we're going to put the auto siphon in. Give it a couple of pumps to get it going. And that's it. And what I'll do is I'm going to cut away and when I come back, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take a sample, get a reading, determine what our ABV is on this one, and I'll tell you what steps we're going to be taking next. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. We're not quite done yet, but one thing that I did notice while doing this, this, this one has a much larger yeast cake on the bottom of the container than the red wine, which tells me this very well may have fermented even more dry than the red. But how to tell? Well, once we get it all siphoned off, I'll take a reading, compare it to my original starting gravity, which looking at the tape on the bottle was 1.080. And I also started this one on February 15th. Um, the same as the red wine. Now, the funny thing is, I used the same yeast that I did on the red wine with this one. Okay, that looks like it's going to be that. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, you left, you left wine in the jug. Well, you know, yeah, I left a little wine in the jug. But, hear me on this. I'd rather leave that little bit behind than to risk having to bring over some of that lease and getting it into this jug. Now, as you can see, it's not a whole lot when you consider this is a one gallon jug. And with all that nasty stuff in there, I'd have to let this sit for at least another two or three weeks to clear out. I'd have to rack it again, and it would take even longer to get it to bottling. So, as before, I'm going to take my tape off of the original jug and put it on the new jug. Now, this is something that I am a little bit excited for because this one... The starting gravity on it started off at, on the red, if you recall, it was point, uh, 1.070. This one started off at 1.080. So I'm curious to see how, how much of a fermentation took on this one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my handy dandy turkey baster and draw a sample off and we're going to measure it with our hydrometer. Now, if you do this and start making your own wine, a couple of things. One, get a hydrometer because if you do one of my recipes that I do on the video and something goes wrong and you hit me up here on YouTube and say uh, I did exactly what you did and my stuff's not working I'm gonna ask you well what was your starting gravity if you tell me I don't know then I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to help you because that is going to determine a lot of factors of what happened with with your brew so let's go ahead and put in our hydrometer oh yeah the bubbles once it hit it, it almost looks like sparkling wine so give it a little spin 
and see where this puts us. Interesting. This one did not ferment as low. This one fermented down to a 1.010. So our original gravity uh, 0, 0.80 0, and then 1.010 it it's almost the same uh, this is a 9.3 ABV uh, not a very high uh, ABV wine which is fine because this just means you get to drink more of it and what I like to do with all of them when when they get to this stage is I pour a little sample off into another glass just like that and then like I said earlier I see the bubbles coming out of here you can the bubbles coming off from the cylinder I know there's plenty of CO2 in here that's not going to affect my wine so I'm going to gently and carefully pour this back in because I don't want to waste any of it. And now, because I know with the CO2 that's in here that my wine is going to be fine, I'm going to go ahead and put the airlock back on and allow this to condition. And the same with the red wine. You know, I'm going to let it sit at least two weeks, you know, two to four weeks, allow it to clear out more than what it already has, and then once it clears, then what I'll do is I'll rack it again. That'll be the two rack rule that I follow and I'll usually do that into a pitcher and then there I'll degas and then I'll put into bottles from that point and while we're talking you can I see the airlocks you know occasionally there's a bubble coming but I know that's degassing but now here's the product a little cloudy both of them are but they're still fairly young so let's start with the red one it it finished drier that you know apparently than the other one but honestly they should be about the same as far as uh, the profile because it was only off by a one hundredth of a point the smell on the nose is you, you get a little of the CO2. Um, it's there. But you definitely know this is grape. And this, this is just Concord grape juice that, that I got from Walmart. Uh, great value brand. You don't have to buy expensive stuff to make wine. Okay. That one's nice. Now... Let's see what our white grape and peach. Give it a little swirl. Oh, wow. Wow. That one, peach, right from the get-go. I mean, just, oh. It'll make your mouth water. I'm not getting a lot of CO2. You know, it'll be kind of a... a an off smell. Wow, this one smells fantastic. If, if it tastes as good as it smells, especially after it clears, I will 100% be making this one again. Oh yeah, Ooh, that one. Mm. All right, let's go back to the red. Now, looking at it in the light, it is cloudy. Now, because we racked it a second time, this, this should clear up a lot more. 
and it'll be more of a traditional wine. But on this, patience is the key. The longer it sits, the clearer it gets. More of the sediment, more of the yeast and stuff is going to fall out of your wine and settle on the bottom. That's why it's so important to have the auto siphon. On the bottom of it, it's, it's got a little cap on it to where if it's not too huge of a uh, yeast cake on the bottom of your vessel, it can literally go sit on the bottom without sucking in a bunch of yeast. Um, but overall, the clarity, it, it is a little cloudy, but not bad. Now that it, it's sat a little while, yeah, some of the off gases have let up. And while I'm talking to you, I, I can see the airlocks are still occasionally bubbling. And like I said, that's, I'm confident it's from CO2. So let's go ahead and give it a taste and see what our, our red wine tastes like. Okay, it is dry, uh, but I will say this, I get the full flavor of the grape on the back end. It, it starts off dry, tannic on the sides of the tongue, but on the finish, you get that grape flavor. You know you're dealing with grape when you try this. Not overly sweet which is what I was going for. I was going for a little bit drier of a wine this time. Normally on my wine, I'll, I, my, my batches tend to be a little sweet, uh, which is fine. But on this one, I wanted it to go a little bit drier, more of a traditional red wine than a sweet wine, just to try it out and see how, how it works. Uh, as in my previous video, I utilize the D47 and it, it's the same as I used in these but this one very nice it's, it's not overpowering it's not super sweet just the slightest hint of sweet but you definitely get that great finish I'm very happy with that one this one with, with the, the peach, the smell is unreal as far as the peach. It smells lovely, for lack of a better term. It, it smells like peach. Um, the clarity is not there yet, but like I said, in time, this will clear out to more of what you're traditionally used to getting in a bottle of commercially produced wine. But the smell, it, it smells delicious. I love peaches. So let's, let's get a taste. Uh, and on the nose, I mean, the, the peach is so pronounced, it, it'll make your mouth water if you really love peaches. So let's, let's give it a little taste and see how it, how it turned out. Holy moly, that, that is good. I, I'm almost speechless on this. It definitely finished sweeter than the red wine, which I'm not surprised because the red wine went all the way down to 1.000. This one was, was slightly above that at 1.010. And as slight as that sounds, it makes a huge difference. I mean, this is just a notch up from the red wine as far as the sweetness level goes. And these were started the same day in one gallon jugs. 
using the same yeast, the same amount of sugar, which I think I only used uh, one cup of sugar for, for each bottle because I didn't want it to be super sweet. Now, the way you adjust for that is if you want it to finish sweeter, add a little more sugar. And it doesn't have to be anything special. I use regular white granulated table sugar and it worked just fine. Um, I've made wines with bread yeast and they turned out fine. However, as time went on, I, I do use uh, specially made wine yeast now or beer yeast if I'm making a beer just because to me it, it finishes nicer than uh, the bread yeast. The bread yeast doesn't tend to settle as well. It takes longer to clear. And depending on what you make, you may get a little breadiness to what you're making. But by no means, don't, don't, don't think that I'm disappointed that the red is drier than, than the peach because I'm not. This would be great with, with any kind of a meat, like a steak or, or meat, whatever. I mean, this is just wonderful, wonderful. But all this requires is very simple, basic equipment, um, yeast, juice and time and you can make wine at home too um, as in my previous video you saw me make the uh, the two gallon well the gallon and a half batch in the two gallon bucket and that one it has taken off tremendously as far as the fermentation it's bubbling away and it's very happy um, when when you do this I highly recommend start off small. Start off in the, in the one gallon uh, vessels like what I'm using. That way, the more you do it, the more you decide what it is you want, what type of flavor. And you can use any kind of juice you want. Just make sure there's no sulfites or sulfates or anything like that in them. Um, a lot of them have citric acid in them, and that's perfectly fine. That's not going to affect the yeast at all. But if you have the sorbates and, and all the other stuff in it, that will affect your yeast and it may stunt fermentation. And that would be very unpleasant. Uh, on the peach, I, I will say this, I would not change a thing on how I did this peach. It turned out phenomenal. But I think it's because there was more sugars already from the peach uh, juice than what was in the grape juice. Um, and that's why it, it finished slightly higher, but it gives it that just slight, slight sweet flavor. It's and it's not overpowering. It's not like a, a, a super sweet wine at all. It's just subtly sweet. This being chilled would be wonderful. You know, if you're, if you're having uh, a salad for dinner or something of that, where you would traditionally use a white wine or even fish, this would be really great with. Uh, now, if you were looking for a more desserty type wine on this right here, what you would need to do is you would definitely need to uh, put in a lot more sugar. On a one gallon, I would not exceed two cups of sugar because it would be disgustingly sweet at that point. In my opinion, your taste will vary. That's why making one gallon batches at a time allows you to kind of tweak the recipe to your liking. Now, uh, these two wines that I just showed you the racking on, it follows the same basic recipe that I used on my previous video of the red wine. Uh, like I said, I just adjusted 
the amount. Uh, in the gallon and a half, I wound up putting in uh, a little over two cups of sugar. So I expect that one to be a little sweeter than this one right here with, the, with just the one cup of sugar on this red. But this red is more of a traditional flavor as far as uh, what you would expect in a red wine. This is more of a traditional red wine than a sweet red wine. You really feel it on the sides of the tongue, the slight tartness, that tannic that you look for in a wine. It has that. On the end, that slight, very end finish, you get the grape. You get a little sweetness on the end. On the peach, though, however, from start to go, less tannic on the tongue, very smooth, velvety on the tongue, but you, you get the peach, 100%, you get the peach, but it's not a strong, like, push at the very end like your red wine is, but this is delightful. I mean, you would really, really enjoy this. I wish you could be here with me. We would be sampling these together. But that's all I have today. So thank you for joining me. And hopefully I showed you a nice, easy way for you to kind of get started going from the initial fermentation stage to the secondary stage. Now, like I said, this is just going to sit uh, for two to four weeks, I'm going to give it plenty of time to clear, naturally degas, and then it's going to be racked again. This same type of procedure that we just did. And then once it goes into there, I'm going to have it into a bucket with a spigot for bottling, and it'll go into my bottles. And then they can sit, and if they want to age, they can age. Honestly, though, this peach might not make it very long because I, I think my wife would really, really enjoy this one. But anyway, as I said, thank you for joining me today. You know, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give me a like if you like this video. And if you have any suggestions on any type of wines or beers or anything you would like to see, drop a note down in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Take care.